Hey guys, Clef here, Gyroscope. We're going through the bottom of this. It's such an amazing way to play games and especially when dealing with mini PCs or handhelds that have very small sticks to really do those more intricate maneuvers or even those big maneuvers that small sticks are known not to be the best to do. <laughs> We'll look into what can be done, what cannot be done, and ultimately how you can make the most out of gyroscope on your mini PCs and your handhelds, your, your Windows-based handhelds. To start, we'll actually first use the Steam Deck and use it as a baseline. There's two things I wanna put out there. Number one, I am by no means an expert on the matter. I do dabble, I like to use it every once in a while, but just know that if this is something you are interested in or invested in, there are far more knowledgeable and some channels that are actually dedicated to playing with gyroscopes on computers. There's so much in gyro. We don't take advantage of that. We're used to our traditional controls and how they work and they work well. But really, if, if you give yourself the chance, gyroscope gaming is absolutely fantastic. Number two, I owe, <laughs> I owe an apology to Aya with my Aya Neo 2 review. So I stand by everything I said in that review, but there is something I did get wrong, that having two gyros and the Aya Neo 2 was the cause. Turns out the Aya Neo 2 is absolutely beautiful and amazing to use with gyroscope. The issue is not the hardware, which I thought was a cause. The issue is the software, which I pointed out quite a lot in my review. This is something that hopefully at some point INEO can fix. However, today you won't have to wait for INEO. We'll look into how you can fix that yourself. I want to give a shout out to user Slawomir Maj. I hope I'm saying this right, who actually gave me the tip to deep dive a little deeper into making the gyro work on the INEO. We'll also explain some of the principles with gyro. Gyro has six axes, X in two directions, Y in two directions, and Z. Here we have Gunfire Reborn, super fun game if you've never played it. 3D shooter, roguelike, there's no gyro activated at this point in time. We'll just go in Steam, controller settings, and you should always have a template with gyro uh, enabled. So here we have gamepad with gyro and we'll just go ahead and activate that layout. Gyro is not working. Here's the reason why. If we go here and we see how this is set up on the Steam Deck, you'll see that it says as a mouse. Now, why is that important? Because usually if you would be to move your mouse, it would work, right? When playing some games, and this is very important to understand because not every game will give you the same result. Some games it's gonna work beautifully, some games it's just plain not gonna work. The way that gyro is implemented, you really have three ways that I at least know of. I would say four. Number one is as a mouse. The gyro will mimic the movements of a mouse by moving whatever you're holding. As a joystick, it'll move the joystick by moving whatever you're holding. It'll communicate through IP. So that is something that we see and supported essentially by Wii, Wii U, Switch, uh, DualShock 4. Did the PS3 have motion control? I don't remember. Maybe PS3, I think PS3, PS4, and PS5. And then the fourth method I would say is like directly implemented, which is VR. Not every game allows you to have two inputs running at the same time. I don't know if it's gonna be easy to see, but it has those buttons overlay. So right now the game is operating with a gamepad. If it sees inputs from a keyboard and mouse, it's gonna say, no, 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 no. I'm not taking your inputs because right now I'm working with the D-pad. What we can do to fix this, super easy fix on the Steam Deck, just go to controller settings and you change the, gy the gyro behavior to operate as joystick. Ever since the day of the Steam controller, Steam has been building its own sets of drivers, which means that A, B, X, Y, the sticks, the gyro, all those data operates under one driver. So it doesn't come in conflict, which is the reason why now I can go ahead and as soon as I touch the stick, that's another advantage, but anyways, as soon as I touch the stick, the gyro works. 
Valve is able to say, well, this is part of the controller. So you get that data and you do what I ask you to do. The other advantage on the Steam Deck, as we know, is that we can use the conductive stick, which is a very natural way to control gyro. So, you know, I don't want to use it. Oh, the second I put my finger on it, I use it. And of course, just like anything else, you have a lot of tweaking that can be done on the deck. When it comes to gyro, the Steam Deck is king. The only other better implementation that you'll see other than the Steam Deck are VR and dedicated home consoles like the Nintendo Switch and PlayStation. Now, the thing with GPD Win Max 2 and the Ioneo with the way that we're gonna make gyro work is the controller connected to them is X input. And X input on a driver level does not support gyro. So we have a problem. And the problem is that we really have only three ways to implement gyro. Mouse, joystick, IP. IP, if the game, the system does not support that input method, there's no way for you to put that into the game. So our two options is mouse or controller. We are operating on a driver that does not support gyro. The team is not gonna wrap your data in a nice little package and tell the game, hey, do it, like it does with Neptune, which is the Steam Deck controls. And that's why it's a hit and a miss. It's not always gonna work. We'll do joystick and it, it might work. I honestly, I don't know if it will with this game. I have not tested it before making this video. It does. It's quite janky, <laughs> right? It's not pretty at all. So let's first have a look at our settings with Motion Assistant. So we have our different sensitivity. Uh, here's what's important. 0 0.1 is kind of your baseline. This is what you want to set um, as your overall speed. Mouse threshold, I don't really know what it does, so we're not gonna bother. Um, axis select, so you know we mentioned how X, Y, Z. So here's why you want to set it to X, Y, Z. Z doesn't really account to anything when playing 2D flat games. There's never a situation in a game where as an FPS, you can turn your head like this. You can go, you can look up and down. You can look left and right. If you don't put the value as Z, what your gyro will read is read every movement and try to, to understand, oh, is that X or is that Y? So it's gonna make for very unnatural movements, at least I find. So if you wanna have an experience that is more like what you've, you potentially experience on the Nintendo Switch and on the Steam Deck, you want to make sure to change to X, Y, Z. It's gonna give you an overall much better experience. Invert, that is up to you. If you prefer that going up actually makes you look down. I don't know why you want to do that, but you know, for me, my brain just doesn't compute that way, but maybe it does for yours. So if you need to invert, that's how you do it. And vertical gain and horizontal gain are the multipliers. This is very important. First, here you'll see that I only have 0.1 on the mouse sensitivity. So I'm gonna activate the gyro on this blue background and using just the multipliers with a super low sensitivity, I don't know if you can see, I don't know if you can tell, but it makes for very janky movements. Ideally, you don't want to rely on the multiplier as much as you want to rely on your sensitivity. Vertical gain, you want one. Horizontal gain, you want 1.6. Why do you want 1.6? Well, if you think of a screen, it is wider than it is longer. Logically speaking, you would want to have to do as much movement to cover the same surface, whether you go up and down. If you don't, you're gonna find yourself having to move more to the side and little top to move the same distance. I don't. I, I'm not explaining this very well, I, I think. I strongly recommend putting these values. You're gonna have an overall better experience. And of course, mouse sensitivity at 0.1 is terrible. I wanna put, say, four. What custom gain does is it affects your multiplier based off of an action. So for example, if you, whenever you hit LT, it will lower your speed, which is, it makes sense, right? Because LT is usually to zoom. So when you zoom, you want to do micro movement. So we're actually gonna go a little lower. We're gonna go 0 0.3. So what we'll do now is just go to joystick, go to gyro simulate. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's much better than the jankiness that we had earlier. So this is how you really make for a more pleasant gyro experience. And say for example, I'm just playing and you know, using that to move. And again, you can increase the sensitivity. Sorry, there's a little bit of lag there. Um, 
what you can do is whenever I'm gonna hit LT, it's gonna make for much smaller movements. Let's show you what it looks like in an actual gameplay. Now it's a little hard for me to see cause you know, I'm filming, but And if ever I was in a situation where I wanted to do micro movements, I would just hit LT and be able to do that. And you, you see the kind of level of precision I'm able to have and at the speed I'm able to have it. I am not a big gyro player. I've only played very little with it and that allows me to do this. Imagine if you start really tweaking it and making it your own. It's really impressive what you can do with gyro. This is why you shouldn't sleep on that feature. It should be used. And believe me, the people who have been using it for some time, they know. Like it's crazy good. I was trying to go for a smaller movement, but it's really too hard from the angle I'm at right now. So now what we're gonna do is we'll just try it on Rebel Quest, but you'll see that things are a little different. Now with RoboQuest, we're on the joystick, and this one we're able to use both modes. Honestly, on this game, I would have a hard time being precise. So now let's try the mouse mode. It doesn't let me use controls. See, because right now the mouse mode, which is by the way, is a lot smoother. Like I Yeah, I, I would have a much easier time aiming with mouse mode. But the problem is I'm not able to use the controller at the same time. Like it's the game is saying it's either one or the other. You can't use both at the same time. And that's very common in games. Some games will let you do it, but not every game. So it's, it's very much a trial and error kind of thing. Now there's something I wanted to address, which makes the INEO drivers pretty impressive. And, and, and I want to show you how it's guaranteed to be the case and how Aya seems to be circumventing that process. It's very important to keep in mind that using gyro can get you banned. Even through Aya Neo's method, technically, if they see that the behavior at which the sticks value are moving are inadequate, it can result in a ban. So you have to be careful with that. But logically speaking, if Aya Neo is going the way I think they are, to get the value. I think that's why it's janky, but it also reduces greatly the odds of getting banned. We're on gamepad tester, right? So logically speaking, I push the buttons, gamepad tester behaves, right? You roll the sticks, it behaves. If you look in the background, Xbox is on, the gyro is on. So if I was in a game, it would move, but how is it that nothing happens? That's because it's a layer that is speaking on top of the X input drivers, which you can see here. So to further send this point home, see what happens when we use INEO's own drivers. So here, just like we did on the WinMax 2, we are on gyro, we are on the joystick. If I move the joystick, everything works, but if I move the device, nothing happens. So, so far, same thing as the WinMax 2. But watch what happens when I deactivate the gyro here. We go into INEO software and we'll activate the gyro. And I'm not gonna cut this part because I want you guys to see. We activate gyro, hold start. We're set on LB, okay? So again, I move the stick. See what happens when I hold LB. It really speaks on a driver level, which is pretty impressive. It seems as though they inject into X input and from there X input behaves as it should. Um, I mean, all things considered, it's it's pretty impressive. So I'm, I'm really curious to see how far they can push that uh, forward. So here's the problem. I think the way that INEO does this is they don't use all three axes like you can set on motion assistant. So this, it kind of works okay, but this doesn't. This should go left and right with much smoother experience. Rather than doing that, what it's doing is reading Z, because if you do this all of a sudden, there you see how easy it moves. So if, for example, you want to go left, you'd have to go like this. 
it's such a weird way imagine essentially you have to go like that it it doesn't make sense what would make sense is to go like this but because they're not reading that axis and they're not letting you set that axis it makes for a janky experience that doesn't mean the axis value isn't there it is it's just the way that the driver operates and we'll just go deactivate gyro all right old star now that gyro is deactivated we'll use the software that was created for uh gpd by this uh, chinese developer that i believe goes by the name frank amazing work really you know i i, I did talk about how the interface interface is not intuitive in my gpd win max to review but i will take a working software any day over intuitiveness but yeah this one works and this is what i appreciate from it so we're gonna go to gyro and um we're gonna set to xyz as we did on the other one we're gonna put exactly the same settings as we have on uh the, the gpd win max 2 so now it's a lot easier to move. And I have to say, now, is it hardware? Is it just the overall ergonomics? But when it's set up right, I do find that I'm a little more precise with the INEO. The sensitivity is not the same, but that is fine. I, I can work with, you know, that's the kind of thing that you just fiddle a bit with your settings and eventually you'll find a sweet spot. And I can still use the stick if ever I need, but. Oh boy. Mobbed. So there you have it, guys. It actually can work real fine on the INEO too. So I, again, I do apologize. The good news is when it's software, it can be fixed. And I has been putting out updates, you know, so I, I have faith that it'll get better over time. Some things I don't see how they're gonna fix like sound tap, but as far as gyro, there's actually the possibility to have a very nice experience on this device. I'm aiming for the yellow lamp, uh, the yellow lantern here. It's very, 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 very smooth. And look, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying I'm dead center, but I assure you, I wouldn't do better with a stick guaranteed. Even with these big sticks that the INEO has, I wouldn't do better for sure. And then there's also handheld companion handheld companion. I just haven't gotten around to downloading it, but I've heard a lot of good about that software. So apparently it's very good to use as well. But all in all, motion assistant is what I wanted to showcase today, but also that you can in fact achieve very pleasant gyroscope level with motion assistant, at least until INEO fix their software and propose a better solution for our gyro to really work at its best. And there you have it guys. I hope this was insightful. I hope this was useful to you and uh, y'all have a good one. Peace.